Okay, budget bushcraft, episode one. The knife is something that we use heavily in bushcraft, woodscraft. It's used for food preparation, it's for crafting off the land those items and tools we need for our hobby. So we need a knife. And I know that everybody can't afford to get a high quality sheath and a high quality knife off the bat. And you really shouldn't right off the bat because you're going to go through the learning curve. But let's look at the features, okay? I want a sheath of some kind that's going to protect this knife. Keep it from damaging. And more important, keep it from damaging me. So in my awkwardness of learning this, if I stumble and fall and it hits a hip or whatever, it should not do anything but bruise me. If the knife will come through it, that's a no-no. Okay? Second point. I want the knife to be of a size that fits my hand. No big old huge bow hunker, no itty bitty one incher. It's whatever fits my hand so that I can control it. Point three, and this is a big one. I want the back edge of that knife to be 90 degrees as a scraping tool, okay? So that's important. And finally, since we're talking budget, it has to be at a price that I can afford. And in the beginning phase, step one, it has to be a knife that's dang near disposable. It's got to be something that if I screw it up and I break it, I'm not out a month's wages, okay? It's something I can replace. Now, Mora is a great knife, and we're going to go to a Mora, but not right yet. For Miss Chelsea, we've got another knife that we're going to start out with. And this knife is, and you're going to laugh, this knife. It has a hard sheath. It's going to protect the knife and keep it from coming out if you fall on it. It's got good retention and the knife sticks in. It's got an easy belt loop for sliding onto the belt and it's also light enough it could be hung around the neck. And it's got this split in the back where you can slide it over a button or something like that like on a inside of a haversack you sew a button and you just slide that button over there and keep it in position inside the haversack. Now, what is this wonder? No, it's not a Mora. This is a, I think it's $3.98 bait knife at Walmart in the sporting goods department. It's a hard plastic with a rubberized handle on it so it fits the hand and it's not slick. This rubber will keep it from sliding around in the hand. It does not have a 90 degree edge. It does not have a good point. And in the right light, you can see the edge. It is dull as butter. It's one stake up from a kitchen butter knife. But we can do something about that, can't we? Because we're bushcrafters and woodscrafters. And we take what we got and we make what we need. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this into something more useful. Now I want that 90 degree edge. So I have a file a coarse and a fine tooth file. So I can do that work. Now, how am I gonna get that edge on there? Well, I can do it one of several ways. I can either take the file and lay it down on a flat surface and put the back up there and just start sawing on it, or I can clamp this into something or put it against something and go across it with the file to create that 90 degree. And that's what we're going to do. Now there's a technique to this beyond just going that way. Since myself and Chelsea are both right-handed, that means that when I take the knife in my hand and I roll it over to the back edge to use as a striker, the burr needs to be to this side of the blade so it's facing forward and digs in better. If I file it the other way, I'm kind of on the back slope and it doesn't dig in as well. So I want to file it this way so that when I go to do, that edge is cutting better. And that will put that cutting edge to that side of the blade. So let's get okay, started. I'll clamp my little hand vise up on the edge of the bench right here. I'm gonna take the file, I'm gonna start with the coarse side. I'm gonna go across, starting at the back, and go straight up that blade, keeping the file flat helping if you'd lock that down Blakey. There you go. Get long strokes. Okay. 
all the way to the tip. Okay, now, when I pick my finger on that proper side, I feel a little raised lip. That's what I want. More back here. Definitely more. Now I flip the file over to the fine side, right here. Clean it up. I still want to leave some file marks, but I don't want any rough file mark. Now, feeling of it. I do have an edge now all the way. So, take it out of the vise. Feel of it. Wipe it. Make sure that it's not just dust I've just created that's what I'm feeling, but is actually a bird edge. Now, we do a quick test. I picked test. up a stick off the ground over here. Bearing down. See, it is shaving down through there. Notice how I'm holding it. I got my thumb on it and my fingers out of the way. And I'm bearing down. And it is throwing shavings down here onto the table. So I have created a sort of 90 degree bevel back there. Now let's talk about this edge. Because there ain't one. So I want to put an edge on it. And to save time on steel, I'm going to use this file. I'm going to shift over to the fine side. I'm going to put it up there on the edge of that. And I'm just going to freehand following that guy. Just like that. This is not a beginner skill. This is a skill you get from years and years of being poor and having to do with what you got. Now, I've got a thickness of a dime bevel the whole way right there. Now, if I hold it in the light and roll it, I can still literally see the edge. You know, it's still dull right there. That's okay. I'm not going to turn the file around. And we'll pull it back the other way. This is just to get it so when I put it on stone, I ain't got too much work to do. It's starting. Now I'm going to use back that out just a little. I'm going to use the file itself on the fine side. Put it on the table. Put my finger and get the right bevel. And use it like you would a sharpening stone. I'm looking for a coarse edge that will basically just shave paper so that whenever I actually go to the stones, I got something to work with. That tip right there, I'm going to choke up on the blade and get that tip. I can tell that tip ain't nothing. Okay, now let's see what it does. Now, I can push up a little feather suit. See how I'm walking down the blade to see how the, each section does? Make sure I ain't got just super dull spot or something. That tip need, still needs work, but I'll do that when I get up there on the stone. So you see, relatively easily, what I've done okay. with that. Now with nothing but a cheap little quick hand vise, and you don't really have to have this. A 
file that every woodcrafter needs a good file and a really cheap knife. I've created something. I've now got a back edge on it that actually has got a little burr. I'll need to redress that from time to time. That will wear down. This knife is not going to hold that burr for very long. When I feel it, I can feel the 90 degree of it, but it's not great. But for what we're going to do, it will work. It would not do anything. Now it'll throw sparks. Before it was just totally going to slide. But now I've got an edge up there. Now I've got a little bit of an edge on there. And I'm going to go home and I'm going to get on my diamond hones and I'm going to hone it up. I do not want a razor with this. Because I want a good, robust, difficult to harm edge that will be good for bushcrafting initially. Because if I go and make a razor out of that, a thin razor edge bends easy. And it's not good for a beginner because they're bearing down and they're, they're unsure. Remember that awkward we talked about? And they're bearing down too hard and they're pushing sideways wrong and they're twisting as they go. And a thin edge just gets all out of whack real quick. So I want a more robust working edge right now. As their skills improve, we'll go to a sharper knife. Now my personal experience when i was five years old my grandfather gave me my first knife ever and it was a barlow pocket knife and i wanted a knife because i watched the old men sit there and whittle and i wanted to learn to whittle the basis of all knife skill was you'd sit there and you'd watch you'd learn and you'd hands-on practice well granddaddy said sure and he went there and he pulled out an old barlow of his one of those five dollar at a hardware store barlow knives he showed me it was so sharp it would shave the hair on his arm. He stuck the tip in a vise and snapped the very tip off because I couldn't then I couldn't stab myself. He rounded it off. You couldn't stab yourself. You could cut yourself, but you couldn't stab. And then he dulled it. I mean he dulled it. And he gave it to me. He told me, start sharpening. When you get it to where it'll cut paper, I'll teach you. Well I spent probably two weeks, maybe close to a month. I saw it on every rock, piece of concrete, anything metal, trying to figure out what I was doing until finally grandmother took pity on me and showed me how to use the bottom of a coffee cup and a file to at least get a semi-edge on it and touch it up. When I went up in front of my granddaddy and sliced a piece of newspaper, he smiled, he hugged me, and then he said, all right, now let me show you how to t really how to sharpen a knife, and he taught me. And that's what he taught me. You don't want the sharp edge to begin with. You're going to mess it up. You want more of a robust edge. And I learned to carve little sticks and etc. And to make little figures and dingle sticks and stuff with the other men in camp. And that's how I learned. As my skill increased, my knife increased. So, for Chelsea, to begin with, we've got this Mora knockoff. This will be her starting knife. When she gets to where she's outgrown this, I'll give her a Mora. Much better quality steel, holds an edge better, does a lot of stuff better. It'll be one step up from this. And when she gets better with a Mora, where she's doing whatever she wants, and I can do just about anything with a Mora right now. When she gets good skills with that, then we'll go to the next. Ultimately, she'll end up with a good quality knife because she'll have the skills to use it. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Please uh, hit that like button and subscribe because we've got a lot more videos in this series coming. I'm don't know how many is going to be in this series. This was episode one, but I'm figuring it's going to take me at least 50 episodes in order to get Chelsea completely trained and outfitted to be an independent witchcrafter. And I'd like for you to come along. So till next time, guys, I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.